Okay, so this is part two of our uh, construction detailing uh, tutorial. Okay, so we're up to text for this. Um, we've got a call out tool here that will do a lot of the work for us. So I'm gonna select that and then come over to the preferences. Yours will look a bit different because I've already um, have it, had a bit of a play in here. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn on this place as keynote. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a way of uh, labeling our each area with just a number and then having um, our notes out the side instead of having call out leader lines running all across our plan. I find this neatens things up. You don't have to do it this way. Um, I just like it. Uh, okay, so we're gonna go place this keynote and we're gonna leave it as default legend. We're gonna come down here and we're gonna change the vertical position to the top. So this means that our, our number will sit up above that leader line. And that should be fine. You can put the text alignment to the left or center would be fine as well. Okay, and this one here, we're gonna change this to circle because I want it within a circle. They're fine. Shoulder length I'm gonna put to zero because we don't want a shoulder line coming off. So this is a leader line coming up and a shoulder line coming off. We just want the leader line. Um, and we're gonna have that as a line. And the marker, I've got this one. You can choose what you find you want. I will sometimes use the circles as well and I'll, we'll talk about what the difference between those is in a moment. And that's fine for now. Okay, so there's two modes for this call out tool. You can either have it so that you first click where you want the text or you can have it your first click where you want uh, the, the, the leader line to end at. So I'm gonna go um, this section option and start here. And then I'm gonna move up and I'm gonna uh, drop it there. So this is mulch, so I'm gonna write mulch and hit okay. And you can see that it's produced this for us, a little note section straight away without us doing anything. And it's automatically numbered that as number one for us. So we can look at that and come over to our notes and, and whack it do. So you do have some control over this. Like I might change this so that it has a solid feel of like a pale gray. It might look a bit more um, disconnected from the, the drawing, I think this way, which is nice. Um, and I'm gonna set up my color fill while I don't have anything selected so that it does that for all the with the next ones that I pop in. All right, so I'm gonna come back and because I set up my preferences for this, it's gonna remember that. So I can just come through to the next objects now. So I, well actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna change this marker and it'll be a good chance for me to describe the difference between them. So what happens is generally when we're using uh, arrows, we're pointing to the outside of an element but we can use a circle as well. And what that tells, well, this is kind of an engineering standard, not specific to landscaping, but the, that circle tells us that uh, it's denoting an area. So I could pop that on the middle of this um, undisturbed earth and have that come off there. And I think that would make more sense than me pointing to the ground line there or having a weird angle coming out from the bottom or something here. So let's come to this preferences tab and change my marker to a circle and okay. And I am going to, let's say I'm gonna pop it here and then bring my text up to there. It's automatically gonna number it for me. I'm gonna call this one undisturbed earth. And perfect. Okay, maybe that's like a touch close, so I can just extend that up. All right, so we've got some disturbed earth here, so we can go through the process again. Again, I'm gonna use this same marker, and I'm gonna call that uh, backfill soil. Perfect, so you could make your way around this drawing and then continue to sort that out. So I don't need that white on behind there, so I'm gonna take the fill off of that. 
Um, you could also set up all of the, um, the text and fonts, which I would go to the effort to if you're going to use this kind of construction detail you'd be using over and over again. So you'd set up your, your way of presenting um, and do that. Okay, so that's one way of tackling this. The other would be to uh, use uh, the callout tool without this keynote generator and you would leave the shoulder length on and you'd probably also use, let's go with the arrow for this. Okay, so now I could just type out my text. Oop, better turn the bubble off as well, my bad. None, okay, and I'll turn the fill off. Okay, let's try this once more. And this way I'm just adding text. Now, if there are certain things that you do over and over again, imagine you're doing a, a footing for a post and there's certain text that you'd have with that refer to Australian standards for this, yada, yada, then you could also use your database here and fill out that information that happens over and over again in here and add it up, add it in. Uh, so you can bring that up with not too much trouble. All right. Um, you may choose that you want all these uh, at the same height or you might like that they all just have the same length leader. Um, as long as you've got a system and it looks neat, I might go, oh, well, they're all about this long and that looks fine. Um, but as long as it's easy to understand, that's our, our objective with our construction detailing. I like to bring the text off to the side, not connected to the callouts because I find it keeps the drawing clean. I don't have too many lines going across things, but each to their own. Uh, so that's text. The last thing we're gonna tackle here is, is labeling, uh, drawing label. So in our dims and notes, we have a section down here that has a drawing label. We can bring that over and insert it into our drawing. Um, we can add our name, we can call this typical planting detail. Uh, this is for brasses in 14 to 20 centimetre pots. Let's say that's what it is. Wow, it's quite a title, isn't it? Um, it's automatically popped the scale on because it knows what uh, what layer it was done on. Now, next bit is is what happens inside this bubble. So let's make a, make an assumption that this is on a particular page and that page is LO3 um, in our drawing set. And there's only one drawing on the page and this is the first one. Okay, so this is what we'd be trying to do in here. We'd, select this and we would choose the drawing number as number one because it's the only drawing on our page. If there were more drawings on there, then we'd just work through it uh, in the same way that we would with a normal page. And sheet number underneath here, we're gonna have, well, we decided that that was on the page LO3, so I'm gonna pop that in. And where it says number style, we're going to change that to be drawing and sheet. Some people just have the drawing number because they've already got a title block down here that tells you the page number as well. So it's kind of doubling up. That's okay. But the why I like doing it like this is because um, we're... We, and again, you don't have to do this. It can cause you problems later if you have to renumber pages. Um, sometimes I'll do it this way. It's just a reminder for me that I need to use this same bubble on a reference plan somewhere so you know how to find this construction detail. Not that you would necessarily need to find one for a uh, planting detail because you've got a thousand plants in there and you're not gonna um, show where each one of them is. It's more for very con context-based ones. Um, but but we, we will have a reference plan somewhere where sometimes we'll put these labels on the same bubble. Uh, so that 
I think is enough. We haven't covered everything and I've only shown you some ways to tackle things, but um, I think that'll at least get you started.